Marlin's Do Not Owe firmware is for all the boards. As you can imagine, I work on a lot of different Marlin configurations while helping out other community members, and I do get a lot of questions on those configs. But one that keeps coming up over and over is will Marlin 2.0 work on my old 8-bit mainboard? And the answer is yes. I think there was some confusion when Marlin 2.0 came out because the 2.0 version did bring us support for 32-bit boards. But it also still supports all the old 8-bit ones, the same ones that were available in the 1.0 release of Marlin. So you can run the most current version of Marlin, currently 2.0.5, on your old 8-bit boards. It works exactly the same and probably even better. So I thought it would be a good idea to run through installing Marlin 2.0 on an older 8-bit machine like my CR10 right here. Now there are some caveats to installing Marlin on some of these different main boards. I did do a video on this previously for the 1.9 version of Marlin and you do have to have a bootloader to be able to put the Marlin software on certain boards especially the Creality and ANET boards. So check out that video for the bootloader portion, but all the rest of the stuff I'm gonna go through step by step, show you how to use VS Code to get you updated to Marlin 2.0 on your old 8-bit board. So let's get into it. There's a printer running next to me right at the moment, so if you hear some background noise, it should be done in just a moment, so bear with me. But we start all of these by heading out to marlinfw.org, and we head to Downloads, and we grab the newest version. We are still on 2053. We'll hit download. We'll head to downloads and we'll extract all. I'm just gonna call this one Marlin20 underscore CR10. The extract all is complete. I'm gonna rename this folder 2.0 underscore CR10 as well. Just so it's easier to keep track of in VS Code. And the easiest way to build a lot of these configurations is to grab the example from the Marlin website. You can get those over on the Marlin GitHub. They are no longer included in the Marlin configs by default, but you can still download them. So we'll head back to the browser. We'll go to the Marlin GitHub and just head to config. And here's the examples archive right here. We'll just click it and download it. We'll head back to downloads. We'll just right click and extract all the examples. We'll head into configuration releases, config, examples, and then there's a folder for Creality. And here's the stock CR10, the original one like we have here. I'm just gonna copy all four of these files, and then we'll head back to our Marlin folder, the one we're working on, right here. We'll go into the CR10 folder that we created, this is the second level, into the Marlin folder, this is the third level, and we'll paste them right here. And we're gonna replace the stock versions. So we'll just hit Replace Files and Destination, we should be all set. Even though we're using an 8-bit board with the 128 processor, we can still use VS Code to manipulate the code and upload it. So let's open up VS Code. You'll notice I'm using the lighter theme. I'm trying this out because some people have suggested that it's hard to see it in the videos. So we'll see if this lighter theme helps us out at all. So we're in the Explorer section right here. This is that top left icon, the files. I've already got a folder I'm working on here. I'm just gonna keep it collapsed. I'm just gonna add another one, add folder to workspace. And then I'm gonna head to downloads. I'm gonna go into the parent Marlin CR10 folder that we made, and I'm gonna select the one underneath it. That's because in this folder, that's where the Marlin folder lives. So we go up one level from where the Marlin folder is, and we select this folder. We bring that folder into our project. We'll just hit add. It's gonna bring it all in. You can expand Marlin. And here's your configuration.h and your configuration underscore adv.h. This should be set up for a completely stock CR10. You shouldn't have to change anything unless you just want to. So this is that stock Melzy board. If you scroll down, you'll see it right here, board Melzy Creality. And as I mentioned before, these old school boards, a lot of these 128s need a bootloader before you can upload the code. There is a bootloader target in Platform I.O. that you can try to upload a bootloader here, but I think it's still way easier to use the Arduino IDE to upload that. That was in the original video. I'll leave a link to that so you can use that to upload the bootloader. But once you have that done, you can control your code in here, inside VS Code. But how do you know if you need a bootloader? Well, if you're working with VS Code, the easiest way is just to try to upload a sketch. Now before we test that upload, I do need to make a quick configuration change for my config. 
My Sierra 10 does have a filament runout sensor, and I need to add that to this stock config. I have a video on that as well. Check it out up in the corner. But if you've seen that video, I use this expansion board that allows you to break out your LCD cable so you can have access to a pin so you can use a filament runout sensor. And when you break it out with that board, that makes that pin number 27. So I need to add that pin and enable filament runout. So in configuration.h, I'm just going to search for filament. And here's where we can enable filament runout. We're just going to take the comment off of this line. Everything else can stay default, but we still do have to add the pin. Now, if you're adding filament runout sensor to one of your configurations, you do have to have three things. You have to enable this option. You have to enable the park option. That's here in configuration.h. The nozzle park feature right here. That tells it where to park the nozzle when you get a pause. And you also need advanced pause in configuration underscore adv.h. We'll open that up real quick and we'll just search for advanced. And here's the advanced pause feature right here. It is already enabled in this stock CR10 config, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you want to use filament runout, you will need to enable these two features so it knows what to do when it needs to kick out some filament. So back to configuration.h, our filament runout sensor is enabled. Now I need to go over to the pins file and add that pin 27 as our filament runout pin. You can see in the description up here, it gives you what you need to define for that pin. We can just copy this. And then over here in our explorer, underneath source, we're going to expand pins. We're going to go to Sanguino, and we'll open up melzycreality.h right here. And it doesn't really matter too much where you put that fill runout pin. You can see there is an undefined right here, so we're just going to stick it underneath that. We'll do pound, define, fill underscore runout underscore pin, space, and then the pin number we need to use. Again, if you're using that breakout board like I am, we'll use pin 27. And that's the only update that I need to make to make the stock Creality version work with the features that I have on my printer. I just wanted to add that in there because I think it's really handy to have a runout sensor on a machine this large. So now we're ready to carry on with our bootloader test. So we are using that same Juino 128 processor, and that environment is available in VS Code via Platform I.O. So if you head over here to Platform I.O., and we have our project tasks, we can scroll down, and we're looking for Sanguino 1284P. We'll expand this guy right here, and I'm currently cabled up USB to a board that does not have a bootloader installed on it. And while we're doing this, we're just testing to see if there is a bootloader, I want to mention the CH340 driver because I can't mention that enough. I do have a video on how to help troubleshoot if you're having board issues and it might be related to that driver. I'll leave a link to that as well. But in Windows, if you open up Control Panel and you go into Hardware and Sound and then open up Device Manager and expand COM ports, this is going to tell you what COM port your printer is listed at and it's going to tell you how it's utilizing that serial port. So it's USB serial and it's a CH340 serial chip. So that means Windows already knows that it needs a driver for a CH340 serial tip driver and you should be able to talk to it. If it says anything else, you're gonna need to go through that loading of the driver process that I show in that video. It's not hard to do, but it can be somewhat confusing when your printer won't talk to your computer. So if it says CH340 right there, we can go ahead and continue on. We'll just collapse this and get out of control panel. And from this screen, we're ready to upload. Remember, again, we are plugged in to the printer that does not have a bootloader. So we'll just hit upload. It's gonna build and try to upload by default. I'll make the terminal a little bigger so we can see. But at the end of the build, it's going to tell you what COM port that it's gonna to try to upload on. It's usually pretty good about figuring out what COM port it needs to go to. And we did fail because we don't have a bootloader. If you scroll back up, you can see that it auto-detected COM11, so that's the right port. We saw that in control panel. It tried to upload that firmware.hex file that was created during this build process, and it attempted to connect to that board 10 times. You can see this STK500 error. That usually means you don't have communication with the board or you don't have a bootloader, so you can't flash the firmware. So if you see this, you probably don't have a bootloader, go back to that original video and try to put one on, it's not really hard, but not something I want to go over again. It's pretty straightforward using that Arduino IDE. Now I've unplugged the board that didn't have a bootloader and I've plugged in my CR10 
And all we should have to do to get to the newest version of Marlin is just remember that you're using the Sanguino 1284P and hit upload. It auto detected that our new printer was on COM15. We didn't even have to close down and reopen. It read what was in there and now it's writing the new version. Once it's written all that information, it's gonna read it again just to make sure everything's okay. And the upload has succeeded. You can verify the amount of the flash. We are really close to the line of what that chip can hold, but it should be just fine. You probably won't be able to enable a lot of features on this board, but it still does work for 8-bit boards as well as all the 32-bit boards. When the flash is complete, we'll boot back up, and we have Marlin 2053. Everything should be just the same as it was, only probably even better. Now we do have this EEPROM version error, but that's really easy to fix. That's just saying that whatever we had on there before doesn't match what we have on there now, and we need to load that EEPROM again. So we can jump out, let's open up Pronterface, we'll connect up. You can see we're on Marlin 2053. It's telling us we do have that EEPROM mismatch. We can run an M502 to bring in the defaults from the firmware, and then M500 to save all that into EEPROM. Now if we reboot, no more EEPROM errors. As always, it never hurts to run an M503 just to see what's in there. Here's the contents in EEPROM. And because we use that CR10 example, everything should be ready to go. You can get right up and start printing, no issues at all. So now we've upgraded to the newest version of Marlin. There's something else I'd like to show you during this video. Let's head back to VS Code. And you'll notice this M over here. This is the Marlin Auto Build plugin. Up here you can click on show the ABM panel and that's going to give you a bunch of information about your current configuration. The configuration we just uploaded to that CR10. From here you can build or upload or clean your install. It's going to automatically select for you the environment that you need to build with. It can take some of the confusion out of building for certain environments. So if you're not really comfortable selecting that specific environment when you want to build, this can be a handy plug-in to have. So these are the compatible environments. We have the 1284P processor, so I'm just gonna show you about that one. But if you hit clean, that's gonna go through and do some cleanup for your temporary files and in your PIO environment. That's always good to do if you're having some issues or something strange is going on. Go ahead and do a clean. This tool can help you do that. And I'll just hit build so I can show you what it does there. When the build is complete, it goes to green. It tells you when it was last built. If it goes to green, you're good to go. You can see it down here, it's succeeded. And you can also just hit the upload. It'll do the build and the upload at the same time. And you can see down here in the terminal, it's just doing all the same things that we would do in that normal build environment, but it kind of puts it all on one screen here. And again, when it's complete, you'll go green. It's gonna tell you when it was last built. Now this might not seem all that useful when you can just go select it up in the environment like we do usually, but this is more important than you think. This is kind of where we need to go to make Marlin more convenient. We need some sort of interface that makes it easier to find things as well as configure Marlin step by step. We don't have to go through the code and hopefully this will lead to a nice migration path where we really don't have that today. You'll notice there is a configure icon up here. It is still under construction. It isn't available to us yet, but that's gonna bring some pretty exciting things to the Marlin project. So stay tuned, as soon as we have more, I'll be sure to get it out to you. So just keep an eye on this plugin. If you'd like to install it and give it a try, you can head over here to extensions and you can just type in Marlin. You can click on auto build Marlin and if you don't have it installed, the install key will be right here. There's also a little bit of information within the extension on how it works if you wanna take a look at it. And there it is, our Marlin 2.0 8-bit install is now complete. And definitely keep an eye on that Marlin auto build extension I think we're going to see some really cool things come out of this project. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Now I think we need to print something fairly large.